So we've talked about op-amp circuits that do amplification, integrate, differentiate, high-pass, low-pass filters, logarithmic amplifiers, exponential amplifiers. It's almost an endless number of things that we can do with op-amps. And today we'd like to talk about something called a negative impedance converter or a NIC. It's this simple circuit here. We have some impedance connected to the inverting input going to ground. This circuit has both negative and positive feedback, but because it has negative feedback, if it's working in a stable mode, then we know that V plus equals V minus. And because V in goes to V plus, this has to be equal to V in. So that's kind of our, our starting point right here, that both of these have to be locked to the input voltage there. And if they're locked to the input voltage, then we can look at this particular part of the circuit here. V out here, V in here, we'll just write that. And a resistor and an impedance. So we can draw that a little bit differently. We have V out, R, Z, ground, and V in. So we have a circuit, V out going through a resistor, V in in the middle going through some impedance to ground. That's just a voltage divider. So as we noted, we have a voltage divider here, V out, V in in the middle, and R and Z there. So we know that V in is going to be V out times Z over R plus Z or V out will be V in R plus Z over Z, which is V in 1 plus R over Z. So there's the output voltage. The output voltage isn't really what we want on this circuit. That's not the interesting aspect of this. The interesting aspect actually is the input impedance. Z in, which we know is the input voltage divided by the input current. And if we have the input voltage coming in, it just looks like some Z in connected to ground. So to get this, we know the input voltage. We need to get the input current. Go back and look at this here. The input current is this, the voltage drop across this resistor divided by the resistor. And that voltage drop is just Vn minus V out. That's the voltage drop here divided by R. So the input current is Vn minus V out divided by R. And V out is simply that Vn 1 plus R over Rz. So we're going to get I in is going to be 1 over R times Vn minus Vn 1 plus R over Z. And this Vn will cancel the minus Vn from the 1 there, and we'll be left with minus Vn R over Z, and then the Rs will cancel. So the input current is going to be minus Vn over Z. Okay, That means the input impedance, Zn, is going to be Vn over In. It's going to be minus Z. It's the negative of whatever we put here, negative impedance. So negative so that, hence the negative impedance converter it takes this impedance, the input impedance of this circuit is the negative of that. What's interesting is if Z is just R, then Z in is going to be negative R. The input impedance looks like a negative resistor. Negative resistor. What does that mean? Put a 
big voltage on it, and instead of the current getting bigger going through it, it pushes current back out towards you. So it functions as some sort of current source. The bigger voltage you put on it, the more current the circuit wants to push back out at you. So it's a negative resistor. You can basically negate anything you want with that, but it's a cute little demonstration of what you can do with op amps. You can create a negative resistor if you need one by building an op amp circuit. And the op amp will basically invert the behavior of this circuit for you. 